Welcome into the latest episode of the Five on the Floor podcast on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Got a special treat for everybody today. We've had a lot of requests for this over the past couple of months and trying to make it happen. We finally found a time where at least three of us could all be here at the same time. And I know no one is excited to hear from Myers Leonard today because they hear from Myers Leonard all the time after games, one of the best interviews uh, with the Miami Heat that we've had in a long time. But the big news today is that we got Ellie Leonard, his lovely wife, to join us. So Myers, Ellie, welcome to Five on the Floor. Hello. Hey, thanks for having us. And right now, just to set the scene a little bit, you are in your house in Miami. Is that correct? Yes, we are. Myers is up in my office right now, hanging oh, out. That's okay. correct. Oh, yeah. So you sent him upstairs, basically. You, that's... <laughs> he willingly he willingly offered to come into the office so that's great, that's great. yeah <laughs> that's great all right so here's what we're going to do today um i mean i know this is maybe a little bit of a challenge for myers because myers likes to give long thoughtful answers but i got a lot of stuff to get <laughs> i got a lot of stuff to get to in fact it's been said i've been covering the heat since 1996 and it was always said that the one guy if you asked him a question and like if you had about 10 minutes make sure you didn't have more than two questions because was Alonzo Mourning because you could ask Zoe a question and you would get a really long, elaborate, thoughtful answer. Myers is second all time in heat history in that regard. So I'm going to, I'm going to turn things a little bit here and we're going to do some rapid fire stuff with you guys today. Is that okay? Will that work? That's amazing. That's great. <laughs> All right. All right. So we're going to try to contain a little bit, but I do want an elaborate answer to this because I know a lot of fans uh, were intrigued by this, impressed by this, particularly during the holiday season. And I want to make sure, because I know Jason Jackson, uh, a good friend of ours, actually a member of the network here at, actually as well. I'm the heat sideline host uh, had done some stuff on this and had spoken to Myers about this, but I wanted to, to get uh, more of a, a broad perspective on what it is, that the two of you as a couple did during the holidays? Because um, when, when people say you adopted, I believe it was five families, I don't know, or three or five families, I don't know what it, it, it is that fans understand what that means. So what have, what have the last couple of days been like in the Leonard household? Got it. So, so I'll kind of give you, hopefully, a short enough version of this. So over the last three Christmases, Ellie and I have not done gifts on Christmas for each other or for that matter, really in our household. And the reason being is because we've realized that now we've been together, obviously, throughout my entire NBA career, and we're in season eight, you know, it's not about the material items. It's not about any of that. It's about spending time because we're, we're both so busy and, and I'm always on the road. So our goal is to really spend time and then to bless others. Um, and during the holiday season. So when I was in Portland, all seven years, I was connected very closely with uh, an, or an organization called Children's Cancer Association. And um, I would do appearances at their uh, buildings. I would do a ton of different, uh, a, a bunch of different uh, events with them. And we grew very close to uh, troubled people with cancer. And so I, when I came to the heat, I knew that I would want to do something again for Christmas. Ellie and I knew that we would want to do something for Christmas. And I was given a list um, by our community director. And we sat down and we talked about it. And we knew immediately that the Miami Cancer Institute would be perfect. And so I said to him, okay, I don't like talking about the money piece, but Ellie and I wanted to adopt five families, which basically means that the heat coordinate with the Miami Cancer Institute find families that during the holidays would, you know, they, they would be, uh, they would have some stress. They would, they would be. Uh, they need an extra helping yeah, hand. Yeah, they need a helping hand. And so um, we, we had, again, five families. And to be honest, the money doesn't mean much to us, but we tried to come up with a number uh, that would make sense for, not only their kids obviously buying toys and getting to shop in the store, but also for family necessities and things that they, they truly need. So um, we met them at Target and we just simply spent time with them and shopped and, and saw 
to basically to see the pure joy on their faces and, and their thankfulness is enough for Ellie and I. Um, just because we understand that their situations are so difficult and it's not only the child that's ill, it's also the brothers and sisters and the mom and dad having to go through this with them. Yeah, that was one thing um, in Portland. We last year held a evening where the child that was sick would come, but also their siblings and their parents. And one of the most amazing pieces of feedback was, and we had games and we had dinner and we had all these activities, but they said it was a night where they could just feel like they were kids and just forget everything else that was going on. Mm -hmm. So and and we could share in that and that's just really special and that's what the holidays are about for us yeah so essentially we just um provided that i guess financial structure for them but again it was more for us about the shared experience like ellie said um bringing some joy to their life and, and allowing them to just enjoy themselves during the the holiday season with less stress Ellie, without mentioning any of the names, is there one moment from the experience uh, during this particular Christmas that really touched you? Something that maybe somebody in the family said to you? Oh, man. There were, so a lot of times, you know, Myers is there with the kids and he's picking out toys. And I actually really love being able to just kind of stand back and talk to the people um, and just hear what's going on in their life or how they found out. Um, and what, I guess just what took, you know, gave me chills and at one point, like, just even made me emotional is just hearing how much it meant and what they've had to battle through. Um, there was a, one woman I was talking to that said, you know, the situation that they were in and are in right now, she was kind of, she was praying and she was saying, why, like, this isn't a way to live. Why, why me? Like, why are you doing this to me, God? And um, she said, two days later, got the call that she was one of the families that we were to adopt. And she was like, it was a sign. Like, I just knew. And that kind of thing, like, to Myers and I, we're coordinating through the heat, but like to hear it's that much of a blessing and gives hope to people like that's just I can't even put words around it it's yeah I'll I'll, <sighs> qu I'll quickly add to that I spoke to the same woman um a little bit later in the day uh, when we were still there at Target and she had said to me like th it was almost a breaking point for me and mm -hmm. I was so worried about the holidays and, and trying to make my my children happy and just she again like was just hanging on like why why me I just want you know you want uh, a break you want to catch a break yeah. like what what's going and on and then all of a sudden sure enough uh, as life goes she she gets a call from the Miami Cancer Institute coordinating with the heat that Ellie and I were going to adopt their family as one of the families and just to see her son mainly just it was amazing yeah Oh, that's great stuff. And like I said, I, I wanted you guys to elaborate on that a little more because I know people were touched uh, by it on social media and other places and on TV. But but again, until you sort of hear it, uh, you don't totally understand it. All right, let's get to some fun stuff here. I, I've heard this from, from Meyer's perspective, but let's go to Ellie on this. Uh, the story of how you met uh, and, 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 ha and how he won you over. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, I don't know if you heard him whisper. Nice version. <laughs> <laughs> um so <laughs> to explain it uh Myers, it's a podcast Myers, ellie you can say whatever you want this is it this is I, it. Yeah, nobody's know, gonna hear this I, it's all it's all good you just I, you're just talking into air <laughs> exactly right but then once it once we hang up i have to look at him and to have him be happy with me no um we met our freshman year of college and he first was the chaperone for my brother's official visit to the university of illinois and we had met just in passing um then it was what a month two later that he had come out for my best friend's birthday and i think that was like the first time we like he, I'm going to say this in a nice way, like 
kind of like noticed me in a way. Would you say that's fair? Let's just be honest. I spotted her across the bar and she was beautiful. Oh, well, <laughs> you could say that. So um, he had asked one of his teammates actually to come get my number for him. And it was really awkward having to tell his teammate, no, I really don't want to give my number to him because he had to go back and tell Myers. So Myers tried a few more times and eventually um, he got my phone number through a mutual friend and we, we had the same friend groups and he was trying to invite me to get dinner with him at the dining hall because he had extra credit. <laughs> um, my, my, mind you, I'm a broke college student at the time so i'm trying to figure out how i can spend some time with and him. it was a brand new dining hall so oh, it was nice. a dining hall i couldn't go to as well so i mean exclusive found, access to the dining hall that's pretty yeah cool. yeah exactly so it actually was kind of cool it was just i didn't really want to go to the dining hall with him um <laughs> i then turned it around and said hey if you want to spend time with me let's go shoot and i've been missing you know shooting around playing basketball and he was like oh heck yeah like he's like home court advantage like let's go and we ended up shooting for four hours it we, we shot for a couple hours and then we sat and talked for yeah deep into the night I mean 1 30 a.m I think yeah what I remember we just yeah we shot around for a while and then just in at half court we were just sitting there just talking getting to know each other and he was a very different guy than what came off when you first met him and I really started to get to know him I was like oh this guy's like not as bad as I thought he might be um and then it went from there <laughs> I'll say it cocky athlete I have to admit I was young <laughs> and I thought I was cool I did the nice version see <laughs> did you think Ellie uh, I, I gotta ask this question this always comes up did you think the voice was real when you first heard it or did you think he was putting it on for you in some way the voice the voice, mean, the Myers the, Leonard voice, the 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 was is it a baritone? The the uh, the 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 strong voice that he has. He, Did you th see? He was a he was younger at the time, um, so I don't know if it was as powerful as it was now. But uh, man, I I never thought about that component of it. Did you have like a booming voice? No, I I was certainly still he a was good loud communicator and such, but yeah, I was kind of loud. He was loud, but <laughs> not the the deep. Not with the power behind it. Right. Yeah. Sure. That. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm -hmm. Got it. How did you both shoot during this? I mean, was there some nervousness? I mean, it's the first time you two of you are spending any time wow. together. You're oh. doing it on a basketball court. Now, Myers, you had been in pressure basketball situations before, as at Ellie. I mean, people don't know, but but Ellie. Uh, played competitively as well uh, uh -huh, how, yeah. did the, how did so, the, how did this go so I've always had pretty decent touch and I, I recall shooting pretty well but she was Ellie is ultra competitive and she said you know what let's, uh, let's play some pig or something and then we, she wanted to do around the world I'm pretty sure I won in pig and so she wanted to do around the world meaning we took five jump shots from five spots uh, in the mid-range from the corner the elbow the top of the key, the elbow, and the other corner. And I went first, and I'm pretty sure I made, like, 22. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to win. Uh, I didn't know Ellie was a 1,000-point scorer in high school. I also didn't know that the mid-range was her, like, sweet spot, and she made 23 out of 25. So, <laughs> needless to say, I was like, okay, what did I just get myself into? <laughs> True story, so That's basically how it went. And then, and then outside of the competition, you know, we just shot around and rebounded for each other, and it was, it was, I mean, it was fun. I mean, yeah. Ellie, did, I mean, did you feel like you should I have, remember. I mean, do you feel like you should have taken it easy on him in some regard? I mean, you didn't want to hurt his ego. Oh, I mean, heck he... no. <laughs> Hell no. There, I knew there's, that was coming. There has been Go no ahead. point Hell in no. our relationship where take it easy on him is something that will happen. She's absolutely right about I'm that. I'm too competitive. I actually really do not like when he takes it easy on me. That's when I get frustrated. So what I'm like, he... I can tell you're... Go ahead. So, what is he? What does he beat you in that you're that you're bothered that he beats you in, and vice everything? Versa? Because let's just take any sport for example, right? I remember we went swimming in college and swimming up and down the lap lane. The dude is like two arm poles away from the other end, <laughs> and I swam during like I swam on swim like on different swim teams, 
makes me so mad. Playing tennis against him. He is a half step away from both sidelines. It is so infuriating to like, it's so easy. Um, so that's why we get quite competitive. I'll just cut to the chase. I'm, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an absolute superior athlete compared to the average person. And she tells me not to take it easy. And that's when the competitive side of the hammer kicks in and it just, it just happens. I mean, right. just, that's just as simple as that. Yeah. Did, does he refer to himself as the hammer in third person all the time around the house? No. Or is that, is that just on Twitter and with the team, Ellie? Oh, not, no, not really around the house. <laughs> if anything, he just says, Oh, hon, do you, did you see that? And I look over and he's like flexing next to the microwave. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> Just so all the people listening here and the people that will be listening, uh, my wife is much more entertaining and much goofier than I am. I can assure you, I've always told her since the, maybe not that first night, but when I really got to know her that she literally needs like a hidden camera on her at all times because she is hysterical. But I, I do do weird things like flex my arm in the kitchen for no reason. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get to the rapid fire then, because you're kind of you're, you're you're touching on some of the things I wanted to touch on. So we'll go here. Funnier of the two of you, Myers, Ellie, which of the two of you? In public, me behind the scenes with our family or friends, Ellie. I completely agree. All right, I know Ellie had a three point seven three GPA. Is that correct? Did I, did I get that right? I found that somewhere on the internet. The internet never lies. Um, uh, who, sure. Yeah, something like something I do like not that. remember what my GPA is. So no, yes, I, of course. I don't. I don't remember mine, but yours is on the internet. So there we go. Uh, who is the more intelligent of the two of you, Myers, Ellie? Uh, you're gonna have to give us one quick moment. Uh, I know this is rapid fire. Coco's dog walker just showed up, and you would hear the house <laughs> clear across the house if we didn't go close to the office door. Okay, Ellie is now sitting back down. I'll, okay. I'll answer for her. She is <laughs> much m more. Uh, how do I say this? I mean, you, it's not even close. I mean, I've said this before and I will always say it. Smarter between the two it's, yeah, it's not close. Ellie is much smarter than I am. So hold on. I, I will say this much. Myers has a photographic memory. My memory period it's is ridiculous. So speaking, this is another thing like competitiveness. So frustrating because I have to work at it. So in college, we would have some of the same classes. Mm -hmm. I would read the textbook, do the study guide, actually study this dude would look at my study guide and just absorb it into his brain and it would make me so mad so but it's not close ellie's the rock star of our house she works incredibly hard she's incredibly smart i myself do feel like i'm pretty smart as well but it's not i mean she she's very smart very hard working yeah. All right, Next better, question, better, be better, better dresser of the two. And uh, we've seen some of the things that Myers wears to the game, uh, those mm -hmm. shorts. Uh, everybody wanted those shorts that you were wearing, one of those games. I mean, you love showing off the legs and all that stuff. But, but who, <laughs> is the, who, who is the better dresser of the two of you, Ellie? Myers. Myers is. Really? That's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. And I'll just say this. My, my wife is very fashionable, very good looking. I have no shame saying that. She's beautiful. But there, uh, a majority of the time, if we're going to a nice dinner, she will, she will walk out of the closet and say, how does this look? And she knows if I don't like it or if I don't think it looks good, I will tell her and she'll go change. There's, there's only so many things that I can like care about in a day. And I don't know why. I've never been a materials or a possessions person. So, um, like, I mean, I grew up with like one pair of like sneakers and if they didn't mm -hmm. serve a purpose of like playing like a sport so like my basketball shoes or my volleyball shoes right got it's, it rapid like, fire you don't care about it Myers better dresser so Myers will <laughs> Myers cares about that stuff he likes shoes like he you like I do things. I do have a shoe obsession yes. so if he cares I, I, I really don't so that's why I give it to him all right favorite spot in Portland uh Myers and then Ellie what was the favorite spot you like to go somebody's going I love that city by the way I've been out there many times but uh, choose choose one spot you could be anywhere in Portland where would you go just literally just spend time or I'm sorry yeah, just, yeah. Like, a, a, a restaurant a place to chill a place anything like what is it what is the Myers Leonard oh my. favorite spot in Portland oh my goodness wow this is mm. oh man I'm gonna let me let me let Ellie go first please hmm? Yeah. 
I would say one of my favorite spots is this place called T-Bar in downtown. It, they have a location in the Pearl District next to a spin studio I used to teach at. And you can go there and there's no, it, there's no other restaurant, or it's not restaurant or what do you call it, coffee shop I've ever been to like it. And it's the best place to work. Um, yeah, that's one of my favorite spots. Okay, well, mine's kind of a tie. I, I'm a homebody, so as long mm -hmm. as I have my wife around or my dog or friends, it's perfect. But the other one I would say is I, I would say I'm the Tillamook Forest. Um, I, I had a Jeep that I did a lot of work to, and basically I would just go out there and completely – He would off-road. Uh, I would off-road mm -hmm. my Jeep, yes. It was more that my phone actually literally didn't work because of, there was no cell coverage. And it was kind of like my unplug from the NBA where I could just go out there and relax. That's cool. I don't right, know so why I didn't say our, our basketball hoop. Yeah, true. The, oh. the gym at our house is oh. probably Ellie's real sanctuary. <laughs> yeah. she thinks of it. I don't know uh, why I didn't say that. Uh, well, well, I'm going to get back to the basketball part with Ellie in a second. Uh, favorite spot. You've been here long enough now. Favorite spot in Miami. Ellie. My favorite spot in Miami. Yeah, probably – the in the Wynwood area, I really like going around and just looking at the art on the walls. My mom um, was an artist growing up, so I just have an appreciation for it. Myers, you found uh, a spot you like? Yeah, I mean, I, w I would just have to say our house. I mean, mm. <laughs> once again, I'm a homebody, but we're we're on the water. It's beautiful, and waking up to sunshine is pretty amazing. So, um, I, yeah, I mean. I'm I'm pretty easy going guy to be honest with you. I'm I'm between our house and the arena. I mean I do my job and that's about it. All right, here these are these three questions are for Ellie. Okay. What is the All best right. thing what is the best thing about being an NBA wife? The number of experiences that you get to have that you would not have in any other life. What is the toughest thing about being an NBA wife? Uh, that people don't understand what you're going through um, mm -hmm. without being in it. And a lot of people think that, oh, like you must have the perfect life like you made it and it's diff it's just different it, and i'm always on the road yeah mm -hmm. and he's a, there's just there's quite a few components and a lot of people just don't understand the complexities of it i apologize i have to insert myself here um because it's because it's truly that powerful i don't know if you've read it i don't know who's listening may have read it or not uh i cried twice proofreading it uh, if you go to ellieleonard.com and read the dry goodbye, uh, mm -hmm. it will explain what you just asked. And I'm telling you right now, it is very powerful and very real. Can, can you give us a synopsis? I'm going to send people there. But just, I mean, Ellie, what is the, I mean, because again, I, I understand what you're saying, because I've talked to a lot of NFL wives, NBA wives, um, MLB wives. It's different in every sport, obviously. NBA is a lot different than NFL, because NFL, you're talking about eight road games, right? It's eight weekends. That's what it is. Right. The NBA is a totally different experience. It could be four games and seven nights. You're on, I mean, I, look, I, I did it as a, as a writer. I, for 15 years, I was on the road covering 40 road games. Uh, so, so I know what the experience is like to a degree, but, but I don't think people get it. I think they look at it and they say, well, person's making a lot of money. They're living a nice life. They get whatever they need, but they don't really understand everything else that goes into it. So I'm going to send people there, but just a little synopsis, like I, in terms of, uh, you know, yeah. what it is that people don't get about it. So what people do not understand is the guys, um, their family or who they have at home. And in my situation, I was his only person out in Portland. Um, and then I'm, a, I'm his only person here. We are their silent support systems. So that means anything he is going through, it comes home and like, uh, it is my responsibility in our situation to basically help him any way I can. Um, and then also when there is that much focus and pressure and demands of the season and tra crazy travel schedule, part of having a healthy relationship is being able to 
you know, speak up when you feel a certain way or need to talk about something. And <clears throat> when the season is going on, there's never a good time to talk. So that means um, if Myers is playing awesome, right? Don't bring up something you may need to talk about because you don't want it to affect him on the court. You don't want to you don't want to hold something good, right? And then on the completely opposite side, let's say it's a little bit of a rough stretch. The last thing you want to do is kick the guy when he's down. So that means for eight months of the year, it is you, you have to um, be very, very unselfish, um, but also try to find the line of Hey, a relationship and having a healthy relationship is important too. There's just, there's a lot of other factors that seem to go into um, their very public job. And the corollary to that, and this was going to be the third question here, the experience of watching him play in a game, what, what your, your, your courtside or you're sitting in the arena home or road, which I know could be more challenging, obviously. Uh, and, and you're there in the crowd. What, what are the experiences that you go through watching Myers play that maybe the other people around you do not, and particularly as you're hearing other people around you comment on what's going on in the game? Yeah, so you have to know in Portland, and the reason that I kind of called it the dry goodbye is because we had you know some of the highest highs and the lowest lows, right? So there was a point in time when Myers wasn't super healthy and um, he was struggling in his fifth season. And the, uh, I mean, to be honest with you, the arena was booing him, the home arena. And I am sitting there watching the person I love more in the world than anyone basically have, you know, tomatoes thrown at him like on the court. And it just kills you because you not only want to fix him because he's not healthy, right? But you also want to protect him and you have, you can't do anything about it. So then on the, at the same time, you know, Myers ended his time in Portland with the best game of his career and he left with the crowd chanting his name. And at that point in time, you know, my body, I, I feel, I'm numb. Like I, I am trying to digest that this isn't, this is real, right? And you're so proud of them. Like it's being in the crowd, you have a lot, you have an investment in the game opposed to just mm -hmm. enjoying it as um, an entertaining activity. In no, like in my, but, but, but now in Miami, that's exactly it. Like I'm watching him and the team success. I can't tell you, I, I, I was telling Myers this the other day. I was like, when Duncan gets on a roll, I am hyped. I am like running around my living room. Mm -hmm. Also, every single one of Bam's highlights has Myers yelling in the background. <laughs> Get it, Bam! Go, Bam! Like, like I love, I love to see him smile on the court like there is something that like just warms my heart in the most cliche weird way but it just it's awesome to see him happy and things clicking and I don't know that's why I think also when people ask how the transition has been a big part of that is I probably have gone to more games here in Miami than I did the whole last year of Portland I it's different I don't know I mean, Myers, to that end, uh, it has looked like you're having an enormous amount of fun. I, I've commented that this team seems to be having more fun than really. I mean, I've covered, again, this team since 1996, and I've seen some fun years. I've, I've been here for three championships, <laughs> five mm -hmm. finals appearances, uh, the greatest show in the world for four years here with the big three, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, a, a, a really fun 2003-2004 team when Dwayne was a rookie with Lamar and Karan that a lot of people – look very fondly on the Zoe Timmy years. Uh, but I haven't seen a team have quite this much fun together, honestly. And I don't know that I've seen the fans have this much fun because uh, the big three years, it was expected. You know, it was, uh, sure. you know, it was, it was expectations from the very beginning. You know, Jeff Van Gundy, they're going to win 72 games. And, and, and then they start nine and eight. And Eric, everybody's firing Eric and everything else that was going on at the time. Uh, mm -hmm. bump, bump, bump gate and chill gate. And there were a lot of different gates, Myers. I'll just put it at that uh, every day, something different. Uh, this has felt very organic and fresh and real and fun uh, from the very start. When did you recognize 
I guess, how much fun this was going to be? Within the first two weeks of me being in Miami, and that's the 100% truth, I, um, I have a pretty good feel for, uh, I guess, culture, honestly. Although I did have some ups and downs in Portland, we, we certainly built a very strong culture of true professionals and guys that work hard. And so, as Ellie kind of alluded to, when I got here, it's, it had been a very seamless transition. And even just the off-season workouts and then playing pickup, you know, the first, the first day of pickup, I came home and Ellie, of course, because she's curious, says like, well, did you talk to anybody? You know, who, you know what was today like? like are, you, are you liking it? I was like, hell yeah, I love it. She's like, well, why? I was like, first of all, Bam, for whatever reason, completely embraced me with open arms and was just big smile, hard worker, and, and, and loves to compete. And I'm the same way, you know. Um, you've seen it. Uh, I think a vast majority of the media has seen it and my teammates feel it. I know that. It's just my positive energy. And it's, it, I'm not faking the fun. It's just who I am. And so it's, I don't know, it's, it's been a really fun team to be around, man. Like, really, I can say that wholeheartedly. Even in training camp, I mean, we are battling each other. Yet, the night of our uh, our dinner there that we had at, at the com- not the complex, the the uh, whatever resort that we were right. at, it was it was awesome. Like we're, we all had big smiles on our face. You know, we're we're eating good food, having having a good time, listening to music, and there's just a vibe. Sometimes you get it's kind of what you're saying. You know, you've been around different teams, but there's just a vibe about it. I think that we have guys that really compete. Um, one thing that Spo always talks about is enjoying other players' success. I think we do have that in our locker room, and that's very, very important. I mean, we're talking about a league where guys are signing 150 million plus contracts. I mean, it's it's I guess probably in the back of every player's mind, but it seems to me like everything is very real, very organic. Uh, guys care. You know, we're we're communicating. You know, Jimmy and I shoot. We went to three meals in in like. I don't know, a 16 hour span in Toronto. My wife's like, dang, you're spending a lot of time with Jimmy. I'm like, I want to get to know the guy. And he invited mm-hmm. me to dinner. Like I went and then all of a sudden the next day we're having lunch and dinner again. Like he gets it. And it does start from the top, which is Spo and his staff. And then a guy like Jimmy, you bring a guy like that in that you wonder, well, people have said Jimmy Butler is an asshole, whatever. No, no. Jimmy Butler is not an asshole. I've said this before. I'll say it again. Jimmy Butler simply loves to compete. He's competitive as like just as hell. Um, wants guys to want to win and wants guys to want to work hard. And I, I don't see any issue with that. We're making millions of dollars to play basketball. It, it, it should be a pretty simple task. So uh, I know I get long-winded, but the truth of it is, is this is very real. And I, I, we are having a lot of fun. And at the same time, we're competing. I mean, I don't know if Spo told you guys this today, but I mean, for a December 26th practice, we freaking got after it. But then afterwards, everyone's getting extra work in and having a good time. You know, it's funny, and I'm glad you were along with it on an answer because I, I, I've been wanting to ask you about Jimmy specifically because I'm working on a piece about him, and I definitely want to get to level foods mm-hmm. here with you guys in a second. But, you know, I, I've been talking to guys around the locker room about the first impression that Jimmy made, and, and I've kind of made that same point that I think that Jimmy's issues, if you take a look at the organizations he's left and kind of where they are right now, uh, I think mm-hmm. Jimmy's issues may have had more to do with environment and circumstance um, than they and, – and also – I guess what the word to use is entitlement, maybe, among some others uh-huh. that he might have encountered. Where I, I think that uh-huh. what yeah, right, I, I I think that what I have sensed from Jimmy is, uh, yeah, he he was the thirtieth overall pick in the draft. Uh, he wasn't expected to be where he was, and he just wants everybody to work at the same level as him. And I I feel like the more people I've talked to around him. Uh, they get that, and 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 I, you know, not just again the relationship with you, but Bam, uh, telling me that you know him sending him a text on his birthday uh, when they didn't really know each other at that point, um, working out with Tyler, you know, up in Chicago from the very beginning, um, you know, it, obviously doing a photo shoot with Justice before the season and kind of embracing him. It, it has seemed like from the very beginning, uh, it, not that he's trying to prove a point to anybody, but it is so contrary to the national narrative on him that you wonder how many other national narratives are not correct. Um, they, so, so before we get to Level Foods, and I want to do that before we close, first impression, because you mentioned three, dinner, three meals with him in Toronto. First time you met Jimmy Butler, he did what, Myers? Okay, so i got to give you a, a, a couple here. I, I just have to. So I was telling Ellie I'd like to get to know Tyler, and i got to figure out a way to do it. So I had caught wind – 
during one day of an off-season workout that Tyler was going to be in early the next morning. So I said to Tyler, hey, what time are you showing up in the morning? He said, I think we're going to work out at 6.30. I said, okay, perfect. I'll be there. And I told, the, I told Elliot it's because I wanted to get to know him and I wanted to start to trust me and, and, and show him that he can come to me with, you know, any problems, any questions, anything. I mean, I've been around the league. And so I show up and in a full sweat on the other end is Jimmy Butler. And I'm thinking to myself, what in the hell? I didn't even know this guy was in town. But I respected that so much. So anyways, we get the workout done. And Jimmy said, hey, big fella, good to see you, man. I see you're working hard. This, this is going to be a fun season. And then fast forward a, a couple weeks. Now we're in training camp. I catch wind that Jimmy now is going to be working out at 3.30 or 3 a.m. it was. And I was like, no way in hell I'm going to let our leader be there by himself. I'm just not going to do it. This has nothing to do with publicity. It, the only thing it has to do with is I'm going to show Jimmy if he's going to put this amount of work in, I want to be right there next by his side, you know? And so sure enough, we work out. It was, you know, it was great. And, and it was just simply that I wanted to show him, I guess, my willingness to, to work hard and, and, and be right there alongside of him I guess in a way and then the last piece of course would be slowly but surely Jimmy knows I care about winning I play my role um, I'm a locker room guy I communicate I do all those things but I wanted to get to know him better so again we, we we've spent a pretty decent amount of time together just talking about life talking about basketball on and on and on so Jimmy's great man he really really is and, and anybody who's who's been around him uh, and I guess to, to your point in the right environment Mm -hmm. wouldn't would know that about Jimmy. Great stuff. All right. Now let's get to level foods. Um, because, uh, you know, I, I need to get myself in better shape here. So, and I know some of our, our listeners do as well and we see it on social media. I know Ellie is heavily involved, uh, in the business. Can you talk a little bit about the evolution of this and, and what it is for people who don't understand it, what makes it different, how they can get it, all that kind of good stuff. Ellie, you can start. Yeah, absolutely. So, as I had spoke about earlier, Myers wasn't um, super healthy in his fifth season. And a lot of that was due to what he was eating, actually. Uh, he, we, we eliminated a lot of inflammatory foods in his diet and saw drastic results in not only his body composition, but also his internal health and then uh, overall well being. So when the next season ran, uh, rolled around, he was bringing home bars from the practice facility that weren't allowed in his new diet. And I said, hey, sir, we are not going back to where we were. Um, you can't eat those. And he's like, oh, it's the only thing available. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to go find some other ones and you can taste them and then I'll order them. He got a few options, didn't like any of the ones I presented because of, oh, the flavor was bad. Oh, I didn't like how big the nut pieces were. That's not the right protein. And I'm competitive. I said, you know what? Game on. I'm going to make you some. Just as if I was making some cookies for him to take on the road. Got in the kitchen, started whipping up some bars. And before I knew it, we had a food company. Um, <laughs> it... It, yeah, very, very unintentional all came from just like me wanting to take care of him. And what we realized is that although it is a category that has tons and tons of options, there were some white spaces that we could, um, that we could do better or different. So for example, we use two proteins, egg white and collagen. Those together are a complete protein. Collagen is touted for its, you know, benefits with hair, skin, and nails, right? What it actually does first in the body is it goes and repairs your tissues. Ding, ding, ding. Perfect for athletes, right? The next thing is, is like protein bars taste awful. <laughs> awful. Mm -hmm. They taste like chalk. So I know if Myers is not eating them they probably taste terrible right so we took so long to make them taste mouth-watering yeah um but one of the cool things after jumping is, is in was 
for so long, I've been trying to help Myers and take care of him. But after being in this industry, in this world, I never knew how much I was meant to be here. So for example, the name level itself is the balance between Leonard and Ellie and how I found both things very, very important. And you have to give time to both sides. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I could I could add a little bit to it. Um, as Ellie said, she randomly got in the kitchen, and I was like, wait a minute, those were really good. And so all of a sudden, one batch became five, five became ten. Our friends and family were trying it, and we're like, wait, I think we got And then they're trying here. to purchase them from me. <laughs> and I'm like, guys, no, I'm not, like, running a commercial kitchen out of my home. Like, yeah. it's, I and, can't do this. And a couple other things I would say is um, Ellie was not willing – to fold at any moment. What I mean by that is on ingredients, on anything that people were suggesting, like, oh, if you add this to it, it's not that big of a deal. It'll help it bind better. Or, mm -hmm. you know, if you add this, it'll make it taste better. First of all, the bars taste unbelievable. The, the, the truth is, it's kind of like Whole Foods meets GNC because it's actually really good for you and it tastes really good. Some bars you maybe taste decent, but they have some, so many additives and sugars and just, it's, it's not good for you. So it's really just a, a complete protein bar. Um, and I, I obviously really enjoy them. What I also saw was when Myers didn't feel great, he was at a point where he's like, Ellie, I don't know what to do. And, and it's hard because I'm like, I just want to take care of you. Um, but I also was looking at him and I'm like, you are a professional athlete in, you know, in the NBA. If you don't know what to do when it comes to your health, and all of us, we're in trouble, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when we started to connect with this doctor, he, um, he has a doctorate in nutrition from Duke, and he was eliminating all these inflammatory foods, and we're seeing these results. I was like, this is it. We have too many connections. Healthy shouldn't be hard. And that was something that just guided us through all of it. I, I could relate from my personal journey. Myers could relate from his, and even talking with family members. It's we are too advanced for how difficult it, it is to be healthy. Yeah. So where, so that's so, our little tagline. Healthy, sorry, healthy shouldn't be hard, and we just want to help take care of people at the end of the day. So Myers and, and Ellie, where do people find them? So we are selling through our website, levelfoods.com. Okay. And, and uh, we have Instagram and Twitter and all the info there. Yeah, Level Foods. So at Level Foods, have you gotten the teammates hooked on them yet? How has that gone? You know, it's, you know, it's funny. Um, all of them have tried them. And when we go on the road, um, our nutritionist and uh, our strength coach uh, will pack bars for us to have as snacks in the locker room. Mm -hmm. um, so I go on the second bus, right? And let's say we're going on a three-game trip. I have since found out why these bars are gone. But So I get there on the second bus, and, I, and I'm looking at the bars. And I'm like, what? where are all the level bars? So I'll go talk to him and be like, I just put them out. I'm dead serious when I tell you, everyone snags the level bars. And, and you know, I mean, and Silva and a few of the other guys have tagged me uh, mm -hmm. on their stories. But they just, they, they gobble up all the level bars. And by the time the second bus gets there, I'm like, what the hell? I'm the owner of the company. Can I have one? <laughs> but I, 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 I'm thinking Tyler is the biggest level uh, sneak. No? I mean, is, is he grabbing the He most? might be. Yeah. That, that, you, you know what, you're probably right about it. Duncan loves them too, though. Bam loves them. Derek, I mean, all, almost all the guys have tried them. But, um, yeah, I mean, we, we literally go on the road and they're, they're, they're gobbled up. So, luckily, the Heat have since bought some more. But, and then also, I would say um, that I was, like, I'm pretty close with Bam. And I, I had gotten mm -hmm. a couple other guys a few gifts and whatever for Christmas. And I said to Bam, hey, I want to I get you a gift. He's like, no, 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 I want a gift. But then we're sitting at the, Christ, the team Christmas party and, Ellie, then, Bam Myers wants to get you a gift. What can we get you? It's like, you know what? Some level bars. So, sure enough, I gave Bam some level bars for Christmas, and uh, they, they enjoy them. I mean, they, they're, they're, I mean, they're good. There's nothing else I could say about them. They're, they're really darn good, and they're good for you. All right. And uh, are you guys planning on, on being up in? It looks like you're gonna have a bunch of teammates up in Chicago um, for All Star. Are you, are you gonna take the weekend off, or I mean, it's possible Myers could get a call for that that three point thing too, with the way he's been shooting it, but. Uh, do you plan on going up there with some of your teammates or, or, you, or you think you might hang out during the break? Good question. I think that um, 
first of all, we're both from Illinois, but also mm-hmm. Ellie has actually been asked to be on a couple of speaking panels. Oh, wow. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll get the call for, uh, for the three point contest. So we'll see. I, I think that we'll probably end up in Chicago. Um, and then, no, we will, because I have to speak. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> we will definitely, Myers, listen, when I talk to you, Myers, we will be in Chicago, okay? And it's just, that's just what it is. No, no, she's on that panel, and so we'll be there, and then I think we'll probably also maybe go down go down to the Bahamas or something for the Player Association meetings. I got gotcha. you. Well, I think your whole team's going to be in Chicago, um, the way it's looking. You, I think you're no gonna kidding. Have two, I mean, you're, you're going to have two all stars. I, I think you're going to have at least one in the three point shootout. You'll have. I mean, Duncan is shooting the leather off the ball. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he's, he's definitely there. There's no question. I think DJJ and Slam Dunk uh, and Rising Stars, uh, I would think Kendrick and Tyler would be, would be locks, maybe even. I, I got to well. be honest with you. I didn't even think of all this. Yep. This is unbelievable. They might as well just sign up. Uh, we, His eyes just got huge. <laughs> he everyone. I mean, uh, yeah, they're going to include mean, everyone. I, 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 oh, yeah. I mean, and you just you, like I said, you're going to have two all stars. Also, I, I, I think there's a there's a pretty good shot of that. There cer- certainly should be two all stars um, uh, up there. Absolutely, should be two all stars. So before I let you go, I got to ask this. This is the last thing because this is kind of how Ellie introduced herself to South Florida and everybody loved you immediately. So I, I got to ask when, when you did the, we got shooters thing, you knew what you were doing, right? Ellie. I mean, you knew you, I mean, it, it was, I mean, it was a great thing that you were doing. It was cool. It was cool to see, but everybody kind of knows where that came from. You knew what you were doing, right? When, when you did the, the, we got shooters on, on social media. Yeah. I'm an instigator. If, uh, Myers hasn't ever told you that. I, I kind of just do roundabout things to just kind of see. Not even it may get picked up, it may not. Um yeah, y'all y'all picked up on it apparently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. The truth is yes. And it's it's like it's like harmless it's like a harmless thing, you know? It's yeah. it's more like just what's what's the the word for it? Um I guess harmless would be right. But mm-hmm. yeah, no, it, she knew what she was doing. Don't let her lie to you. <laughs> we knew what you were doing so it's okay as long as we do it the fans do it i feel like immediately they understood it i saw bam kind of made allusion to it the other day in the locker room also about we got shooters so i, I think yeah that might look good on a t-shirt but uh listen myers an omen with the way you guys are playing and shooting I, I think you're the reason that the team's shooting practically 40% from three because we didn't think this was going to happen i, said that, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if i said i was it but <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It, it's, it's worked out pretty well. Again, like the way Duncan and, and Kendrick and, and Tyler and all these guys, Myers are shooting. It's been pretty great. Well, really, really appreciate the time. Again, go to levelfoods.com, follow Myers and, and Ellie on, uh, on Twitter, obviously on Instagram as well. I've got to get myself some level bars to get myself in shape here. Uh, but we really, really appreciate the time. And Myers, you did great with the rapid fire. That was tremendous. So good work. Perfect. Um, it, it, it was it was great stuff but thanks and, and i know everybody's going to appreciate this awesome well thanks for having us on we appreciate it yeah this was fun thank you